Welcome to Mendix Logot App Development Backend Part. In this video, we will explain you how to create a Mendix application backend part for Siemens MySphere from scratch. To be able to do that, we need Mendix Developer software. The Mendix Developer version that we are using is Modeler 7.23.4. Let's start it. If you would like to develop a Mendix app for Mindsphere OS, we have to go to Mendix App Store and download the provided CMS Mindsphere starter application. Click the download and you will see three different storing places. One is new Mendix team server, second is existing Mendix team server and the third is locally on disk. If you are working in a new project and you are more than one developer, you have to select new Mendix team server. If you are working alone in a small project, you can store it locally on disk. Also, in this page, you probably would like to change the name of the project. The reason that we have used Siemens MySphere application is, the MySphere OS has different user interface and single sign-on process tools. To be able to connect smoothly, we need this starter app. After we open the application, we go to App Store again. There, we have to download Siemens MySphere Asset Management module to connect our assets that we will create in MySphere Launchpad. Let's see the modules that are coming built in when we start Siemens MySphere starter app in Mendix Developer software. First is Administration module. This module allows to create different users for a Mendix app. But here you have to be careful, because the Administration module is not compatible with MySphere. If you would like to create different users, you have to define them first in MySphere and you have to assign them as different users in every module that you are using. This part will be covered in the configuration of MySphere Launchpad video, which is the third video of this project, and you would like to check this video also later on. MySphere User Interface Resources module applies MySphere styling to your Mendix app and includes some additional custom files which are required for the correct operation of your app on MySphere OS. MySphere Asset Management Connector module enables to consume assets data from Siemens MySphere. Asset Management Connector enables the communication interface between Mendix app's backend and MySphere. Whenever the Mendix app requests for assets and or asset type by ID, MySphere Asset Management Connector searches in MySphere if the requested asset and or asset ID is valid on MySphere. If the asset and asset ID is valid, it returns these values to the Mendix app's backend part. MySphere OS Bar Connector This connector enables OS Bar customization for your Mendix app running in Siemens MySphere Cloud. MySphere Single Sign-On Connector This connector allows you to utilize Siemens MySphere Single Sign-On. It takes the user role of the user's email that has been used to sign in into MySphere. Then module compares the user roles with the Mendix roles and then, if it matches with any role in Mendix security, module provides valid MySphere token which is compatible to tenant name and the application name for this user. This module also allows the remote connection via application credentials with client ID and client secret. Now it's time to configure our modules. First we take care of MySphere single sign-on app module, which comes as built-in module in MySphere starter application. To be able to connect in MySphere Launchpad developer cockpit with our Mendix app, Cockpit application name constant of MySphere single sign-on module of the Mendix app has to be same which we have to give in MySphere OS when we are registering the application in MySphere application. When we will push the app, these two strings constants have to match. That is why it is always have to be used the same names with MySphere Launchpad developer cockpit and Mendix app. 
Now we have to change ask for app credentials on startup constant. This is a boolean value, which can be true or false. We set this to false because we want the program ask us client ID and client secret keys only once when we try to access assets for the first time. This is optional but very useful. Now the host and user tenant constants have to be set within our Mendix application. These names are coming from Mindsphere OS. The tenant name and the host tenant names are classified and special to every Mindsphere tenant, so that's why you don't see those. With this, we have configured all the constants that we would need for Mindsphere single sign-on module. Now it's time to configure Mindsphere OS bar connector. Here we change only one constant. This is a JSON file which we have in a string constant. You can add your website, display name, copyright information, your internet website and so on. And in a Mendix application we are using microflows to create the logic. Let's see some of our microflows. Mindsphere token microflow is getting the token from Mindsphere to our Mendix application's backend part via Mindsphere single sign-on module. As we have said before, this module can be added to your program separately or you can directly download the Siemens Mindsphere starter application from Mendix App Store. Once single sign-on module is present in your application, this access token object can be taken directly via this feature. From the toolbox, you can simply drag and drop this access token like this. It returns the authentication response to our Mindsphere single sign-on module and if this token is valid, user can use the program. Now let's check get assets microflow. In this microflow, we are giving the asset view object as parameter. First block is to change parameter of asset view object which is created in get asset view microflow. Then we retrieve asset type by id microflow result from association between asset view and asset type with the help of MySphere asset management connector module and we create filter as object. Then again get all asset java action call filter and token pass to this action. As a result, we get compatible asset to our backend. First, our backend checks assets response. If we do not have asset response, Microflow will return empty asset list. Here, we are coming to a decision path. If true, then the program retrieve all assets from MySphere via asset management connector. Then we change has asset variable value to true and microflow will return a list of assets. In this microflow there is also error handling which is a breakpoint in Mendix. First we are checking the person is authorized or not. If the user is unauthorized it shows the log message about HTTP error and content and show message of you do not have the permission to perform this task. And of course we are not getting any assets and which is returning an empty list of assets. Let's see get asset type by id microflow. Two parameters are defined here. One of them is asset type by id which is a constant value and defined by us. Another one is the Mindsphere token. After that, we pass this data to Asset Management Connector Java Action, which triggers Asset Management Connector Get Asset by ID Microflow. If the user is unauthorized, the application again shows the error message. Other path of the if condition, which means the user is authorized to see this asset, the application returns the asset type by ID data. Get asset view is the first microflow which is triggered by our dashboard page. This microflow also calls previous microflow as you see. After that, the app creates object for asset view entity. 
Now let's check the open asset microflow. If the user gets a valid MindSphere token, this microflow shows the dashboard. Otherwise, the user again see the error page. As you see in the microflow logic, Mendix Lowcode app development is always going from one microflow to another one and divides the complicated programming logic to small pieces. Also, this way of programming allows developers to add more logic without changing the application logic or code that much. So, in this sense, we can say that it is much more flexible than other classical programming languages. That's why it is really helpful to use Mendix Lowcode app development environment. With this brief explanation, we come to an end for second part of our video tutorials. Thank you for watching.